My name is Rami Ramaham, uh, Director of Product Marketing and focus on SD-WAN. So in the next few, few minutes, I'll keep it short so we can get in the demo. We'll look at SD-WAN and how SD-WAN is foundational for SASE journey. I'm gonna start with the slide. I know you guys, then I get excited about these boxes. <laughs> I know this is not something you wanna see, but I wanna uh, uh, bring a, a very critical, important point. So what you see here on the left is our leadership in the firewall for the last 13 years. And what you see here on the right is our leadership in the SD-WAN market for four years, for the last four years. What's important here is that the same platform is actually used in both the network firewall and SD-WAN. The same, same operating system that we're talking about, the same management that we're talking about. So then the question is, why is that important? Why we want to highlight that? Because when we talk about convergence and what Satish has been talking about is, when it comes to convergence, you want to do it correctly. You want to do it right. You want to have things done from the ground up. You don't want to be bolting things together. So what's inside that platform that we're talking about today? So the first thing is we have the SD-WAN. So all the, S the advanced SD-WAN capabilities. So we dynamically, identify and steer over 5,000 applications. And we actually, on top of that, we have another over 3,000 applications that we can identify for industrial signatures. We have different options to steer that traffic and that, that uh, the user or the IT can, can select from. And in case of blackouts, brownouts, we detect for that automatically and correct for it. So we have things like forward error correction, packet duplication, um, sub-second failover, and many other features in the SD-WAN. The second thing is the next generation firewall. Intrusion prevention, uh, DNS URL filtering, um, the anti-malware, sandbox, and CASB, it's all part of this next generation firewall. Also, we do SSL inspection as well as the TLS 1.3. So the good thing here about that is we can do it with minimal uh, impact performance on the platform. Why is that? Because we have our own purpose-built ASICs to handle that traffic. The third thing is the advanced routing. So we have all the dynamic and static routes as part of this platform. And lastly is the, the ZTNA application gateway, the Zero Trust Network Access application gateway. This is very important, and I'll talk more about this, but, but it's a way of enforcing the policies that you set in place for users when they are accessing the applications. All these functions are managed by the FOTI manager. This is our centralized management. Everything is managed by the FOTI manager, and we'll see a demo of that by, by Marco after me. And there's a companion of the FOTI manager, which is the FOTI analyzer, for users to get more analytics, um, you know, more logs, more reporting. Again, that's a companion to the FOTI manager. And that's what makes up our secure SD-WAN solution, where it's, everything is powered by one operating system and one management. Okay, so um, because the time that we have, the, uh, and we just wanna give more time to the demos, so there are several key advantages of our solutions. I'm gonna focus on the first three, again, because of the time. Uh, so the first thing is the autonomous and decentralized approach. As probably most of you heard, there was a recent incident in the industry where the controller went down. And that controller went down, took the whole network down with it. And that's a single point of failure that organizations want to avoid, especially when now when you are converging network and security. You cannot afford to have that, de that dependency on the controller. So what we have done is we actually decoupled the devices from the orchestrator. So now the devices can function on their own. They have all the intelligence, all the capabilities in the devices. So if the controller goes down, these devices will continue to operate no matter what, independent of the management or other devices. Moving on to the next um, element, which is the seamless SASE integration. 
So hybrid work is here to stay. It's not going away. It's actually went up in the last few years. And organizations want to give consistent network and security experience to remote users. So we'll see in a demo how we can provide that seamless connectivity. But the point, the key point I want to highlight here is the secure private access that we provide to remote users. This is unique to us. This is where we bring in SD-WAN in our 40 SASE pops. So now, so, now the, so now these 40 SASE pops, where you have the SD-WAN, can join the rest of the SD-WAN region to connect to your corporate uh, resources in your own data center. So now all the SD-WAN policies that you have in place and the rules will be part of this SD-WAN region and get you access in the most efficient way to your hubs and reach your applications. Now let's get at the universal ZTNA. Users are moving everywhere. <clears throat> they are on net and they are off net. And the concept is here is as they move on, on net and off net, how can you continue to enforce the ZTNA policies? So what we have is when you set up your ZTNA policies in our 40 SASE pops, it will connect and synchronize with your SD-WAN in, in, in the SD-WAN regions where you have the ZTNA application gateway that I mentioned earlier. So now when I have a user trying to access applications here, then these users are automatically or uh, easily connected to to the hub where, it's, where you have the application gateway in the SD-WAN and enforcing that policy before they're accessing the applications. The same thing here, if I have a user who's actually trying to access applications in the cloud, then I do the same thing where it's the ZTNA application gateway that is sitting in the cloud, then I'm enforcing that policy. Now, if that user move here in the, in the, on-prem, on, on, on then the same thing can be is applied where the application uh, where the ZTN application gateway is enforcing uh, enforcing that policy as it's trying to access whether applications in the corporate uh, data center or actually setting things in the cloud. So this is very important where we actually make it very easy and consistent in terms of uh, having uh, users uh, being able to enforce these policies no matter where they go. I know I just want to leave you with um, one thing here before I hand it over to Mike and talking about how we do all these things. There are three things that kind of wrapping up what I just talked about. The first thing is just reinforcing the point about our convergence with one operating system and being able to really provide organizations a way to transform and secure the SD-WAN or this is actually the network itself. And we've done everything organically. We, it wasn't through any, some trying to stitch things together from other acquisitions. The second piece is about the ability, the way we are designed, where we're decoupling things from the orchestrator, where we have our built-in ASIC, we can actually achieve that massive scale and performance to allow organizations to build any type of one architecture. And lastly is all this tight integration. All the tight integrations, I know I did not cover things related to the switches, to the access points, to the wireless WAN, which is the, you know, the LTE 4G. Everything is that we have, we have a tight integration on the both hardware level, the software level, and the management level. So what that means, organizations who are transitioning to what we call software-defined branch, where they're trying to really bring to simplify the whole infrastructure, or they want to move to SASE, we make that very easy for them. I've got a couple questions about some deeper level stuff. So you say you've converted, I'm this Nick Baraglio, by the way. Um, you've converged on one OS. Does that imply that the routing stack and networking capabilities are uniform across all the platforms? I mean, obviously you're not going to want to shove a whole table into a tiny little device, but is the protocol stack the same across all of the 
all of the hardware platforms. I would say for the most part, you know, where, where, the, where that networking piece makes sense, um, I, w I would say yes. Andy, do you have something there? Yes, I was virtually raising my hand to say <laughs> that, yes. We, we, we have the same uh, functionality in terms of you know, from our smallest box all the way up through our 7,000 series chassis that cover our telco, large MSD customers. It's the same functionality, same features. There's only on a very, very rare occasion where we not include some type of routing functionality or security functionality, even in the smaller boxes. But for the most part, I, I, on the routing, on SD-WAN, it's the same functionality across all of our devices. Physical, virtual, the okay. platforms of all sizes. So, so, so as, a, as a poor example, if I want to run uh, ISIS and BGP and take the fall or what? If I want to do that, I can do that on any of the platforms. In, in, correct, including we do have a full product uh, matrix, but I, I can. And, and I'll, I'll tell you, I, uh, ISIS as well as BGP are even in our smallest boxes. Of course, right. those smaller boxes are going to have a small, smaller memory and therefore smaller route table, right. but functionality will be there. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, hardware constraints notwithstanding really i was talking about just are the protocols there um you know you should always do your due diligence when you are looking at how many routes you're trying to shove into any type of hardware so you know that that shouldn't need to be set but it often is um the second question is that an in-house developed protocol suite like do you develop all of your own uh do you roll your own protocol stacks one of the things I've heard repeatedly from folks is that they're always very happy with the the Fortinet's ability to interoperate with um, at, a, at, a, at what I would call a network engineering level, right? Like not a security engineer, like the network engineers like this box because it has a robust stack. Yeah, one of the things that we've always prided ourselves in, and even with the maturity of SD-WAN, we have been tempted to go proprietary for certain things, but we have always, from the very beginning, tried to pride ourselves on always using protocols that are available for interoperability across uh, other platforms, open source protocol when it makes sense, uh, but BGP IPsec, it is a standard implementation. We don't do anything proprietary on there. There are a few exceptions, but they don't change the interoperability of a functionality. So uh, as part of our SD-WAN design, we do some we do some really interesting things with BGP that other 40 gates can take advantage of, but it doesn't stop the inter interoperability of a, a peering with another BGP router. It's just, it may not have the ability to say, flip a BGP route based off of an SLA. Uh, if you're using it across another device, because of course it won't have any notion of that. But every, we design everything around interoperability, and SD WAN is no no different in that regard. Yeah, 